Welcome everybody to the Sunday night service in the garage. This is the edge of eternity for our weekly service. And I'd also like to welcome special guest, Arco Ho Ho Horton. Well, everybody, it's Bill and I want to welcome you to the service tonight. Um, this tonight is brought to you by Bryce DeCastro, who is working on Project Frankenstein. Make sure you check him out. And if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing his new t-shirt and the thing is awesome. Thank you, Bryce. Really appreciate it and appreciate uh, watching all your uh, content on your channel. Also here tonight with us is our special guest, Arco Ho Ho Horton. Now, if there was a Santa Claus, my guess is he would really be riding a chariot like this one here with a big V8 in it and he'd get around the globe in no time at all. Sitting in for Santa tonight is Arco. Thank you, Arco. All right, one more guy I want to talk to you about is uh, Joey Collins over at Mill Creek Fab Shop. Here's his sticker right up here. I want you to go check him out. He's starting on a new uh, Hendley Lathe restoration project that's very cool, and I think you'll uh, really enjoy it. He's already got a couple of videos out there, so go check him out. Check out all my channels. They'll be in the description. All right, let's get going. So we've been going through the Name of God series. Last week we did the name Elohim, which simply means God. God. Tonight we're going to look at one of those other three parts of the Trinity that we looked at a few weeks ago, and that's Jesus. Because we're coming up on Christmas. By the way, guys, if you haven't shopped for your wives yet, you've got about 13 days. Actually, it'll be closer to like 12 when you wake up in the morning, so get busy. Um, by the way, speaking of wives, I went and did the grocery shopping tonight. It was a small grocery shopping. I found another reason why I love my wife so much. Make sure you show your wives how much you appreciate them uh, because they do a lot of things that we're probably not as good at as they are, like shopping. All right. So anyways, back to this service tonight. Um, we've been talking about the names of God. And so I wanted to bring up Jesus because Jesus is God. You'll remember that triangle that we drew, right? We had the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in the center of that triangle, we had a circle that said God. And we had arrows that said Father, pointed down to the word God is God. Jesus, the Son, had an arrow pointing to the center of God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit pointing to the center where it said God. The Holy Spirit is God. He comes in three personalities or three persons. They all make up the fullness of God. But God had to come to earth. And he decided to come to earth in the form of his Son. And we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. And I'm going to be asking you to look at Christmas maybe differently than you have in the past. Maybe not. It just depends on you and, and how you view it and your relationship with God and, and your family's traditions and all that. All those things really come into play. So tonight we're going to talk about a few verses that talk about Jesus coming to earth. Now, when you think of Christmas, what do you think of? Um, Santa Claus? Do you think of shopping? Do you think of family get-togethers? Um, what do you think about? Think about being so busy you can't believe you're doing this again. It's already Christmas and it's such a busy time of the year and there's so much going on. Our focus gets taken away from the real reason of the season. I've talked many times on this channel about deception, how we get deceived or distractions, how we get distracted. And uh, it's hard to keep our focus on that one thing that is more important than anything in our lives, which is our God. So let's talk a little bit about Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus, we've looked at uh, the verse in the Gospel of John, verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, that simply says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
the next verse, verse 2 says, He was in the beginning with God. That beginning is a word for us. They've, they are eternal. They've always been. There were not a time that God wasn't, okay? And so he said, I've got to come to earth to show the people the way. What better way is it if I live among them? A little bit later on in John chapter 1, talked about Jesus' birth, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And you remember the stories through the, through the years about the angels singing and the wise men coming and all the fanfare that took place, the angels appearing to Joseph, the angel appearing to Mary, just tell them, you guys are going to be the parents of the Son of God. Mary, you are going to give birth to the very Son of God. Can you imagine how much pressure or amazement or fear or all the different emotions that would come from an angel appearing to you saying this? Sorry, I stepped away for just a second because the heaters were blowing and it was too loud. So, you know, Mary was chosen to give birth to God's one and only son. His name was Jesus. When we look at the names of God, his name was Jesus. Um, in Revelation, when we look at Jesus, speaking of his eternity, so we can kind of understand who he really is, he said in Revelation chapter 1, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. Jesus Christ is God. We see in the New Testament, he's described as the fullness of the Godhead, all three parts, bodily, in the form of a human body. <coughs> he, he appeared to us. Now, 740 years earlier, before Jesus was even born on the earth, Isaiah had a prophecy, and this is what it said. You may have heard this in Christmas stories. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it, with justice and righteousness from what that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's summarize this. That's in the Old Testament, 740 years before Jesus was born, okay? That this promise and this prophecy was given, and God desperately wanted us to have this gift that would bring us into a personal, close relationship with him. Now, 960 years before Jesus was born, uh, in 2 Samuel, the author writes this, I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. This is God's word through this prophet. He says, I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. This is prophesying the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. Listen to this. When he commits iniquity, now Jesus never sinned, but he was coming to take our sin upon him because only the sacrifice of the Son of God had the pure blood of that was able to cover the sins of all mankind. The Jews had been doing it for years and years and years, you know, um, sacrificing lambs and goats and doves and things like that, rams and, and, different, and different things like that, to cover their sin temporarily. It was a substitutionary death. Jesus' death was also substitutionary. He took on my sin so that I could be forgiven and he bore the punishment on the cross. And that's this verse is 
prophesying all this. I will correct him with the rod of men. Uh, maybe you uh, saw Mel Gibson's uh, movie that showed the depiction of Christ being crucified on the cross, and it was brutal, and that didn't even show the true brutality of it all. But he says, um, I will correct him with the rod of men and with the strokes of the sons of men. In other words, we are the ones who put him to death, but he willingly gave his life. Certainly he was the son of God, God incarnate. He could have freed himself from all of that, but he didn't. He said, Father, not my will, but thy will. And so he did what his father wanted him to do. Now, we see the Father in heaven, God, calling Jesus here his son, and he will be punished for the sins of mankind. For every sin, for all time, sins will be forgiven if we have this personal relationship with him that we talk about here so often. Now, um, another uh, Isaiah verse. Listen to this. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us. God came to be with us through his son, Jesus Christ. He lived among us and he did that for us. And when his son was sacrificed and God saw the punishment that he endured, it broke his heart. We can talk about that sometime, of the difficulty that Jesus had when he says, my father, why have you forsaken me? It was like he was gone all of a sudden. And the people that don't accept Christ as their savior and who are left here or, you know, they die just like all of us die here on earth um, and then someday face that judgment. Well, if you don't know him as savior, you're going to know that you're separated from God and that separation is what hell is going to be like. It's going to be lonely, it's going to be desperate, it's going to be painful, and it's going to be terrible. That's why he sent Jesus. He doesn't want us to have to do that. So at Christmas time, we're celebrating the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. God gets this rap sometimes about being this angry man who's just out to get us, but he's the one who's trying to save us and who has made the way. So Christmas time is a great time to receive the gift of Jesus. I'm going to read to you the Christmas story from the New Testament right now. And I would, a portion of it, just a small portion of it. And I'm going to encourage you to read this to your families at Christmas. Just have them gather around you and sit down for five minutes while you read this short story so that they can begin year after year to see that, hey, there's more to this Christmas time than hustle and bustle and buying and getting gifts and giving gifts and having family get together and all these things that make everybody so busy and get everybody all frustrated. It's about Jesus Christ. He is the reason for the season. Listen to this. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Jesus was a Nazarene, as you know. To a virgin espoused to be to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, art thou among women. The angel was telling Mary, getting ready to tell her about this child that she was going to bear. But first he said, thou blessed you are, you are found favor above women. You are going to give us God's gift of life. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind, she thought in her mind, what manner of salutation is this and should this be? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Imagine having the child of God growing inside of you, living inside of you, 
and you are responsible to raise that child. Wow, that would be a sobering thought. It's hard enough raising our own children, uh, let alone being responsible for God's one and only son. That's a big deal. So, let's continue here. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Jesus is the same as Emmanuel. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there shall be no end. This reflects the same scriptures that we read in the Old Testament. Then Mary said to the angel, how shall this be, seeing I have not known a man? In other words, she had not had intimate relations with any man. She was a virgin, the Virgin Mary. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Imagine Oh, man, imagine what was going through her mind. Wow, I would had to be uh, chilling. So, you know, Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Of course, we celebrate with things like Santa and giving gifts and presents and all that, but we've got to keep in mind what the real reason we celebrate Christmas is. It's for the gift that God gave to you and me so that we could be forgiven of our sin and have a relationship with him that has no end. This is what Christmas is about, and I really want you to think about it this year. So have your family sit together and read this story. I'm going to put uh, the Christmas story in my description, so please check it out. All you'll have to do is click on it, and it'll take you right to the Bible online and to the verses you need to read. So. If you don't have it uh, in your Bible, or if you don't have a Bible, you'll be able to read it right off of your phone or a pad, iPad or something, and um, you'll be able to read it to your family. I think it's so vital that our children and uh, even our older adults and our spouses, you know, anybody that we're connected to has the opportunity to hear this real story of why we celebrate so greatly at Christmas. And uh, so we can all have that blessed hope that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for tonight and the uh, service that we can have here in the garage and meet freely. And I just ask you, Lord, to bless each person who has heard this message. I pray that they would share it with their family. Uh, Father, I thank you so much for this time of the year when we celebrate uh, the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, and what he did when he came to this earth to set us free from sin and put us into a everlasting relationship with you, Father. We are so grateful and so thankful for that. And Lord, I just pray for everyone who is listening to this, if they haven't made that decision yet, Father, that they would choose to accept your son, Jesus Christ, as their Savior and Lord, that you, Father, would be glorified through them and be blessed by the commitment that they make to you Thank you, Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, everybody, we'll uh, have another service that's going to relate to Christmas next Sunday night. And uh, I just hope and pray that each one of you will have a blessed Christmas season. It's a great time to be together with family and friends. And it's a great time to remember what God has done for you and I by sending his son to earth to give us freedom from our sins and to save us and give us everlasting life in heaven. Please consider that message and uh, I pray you have a blessed week. Thank you very much. Good night.